Hello and welcome back to another Access tutorial video. So you may never have heard the phrase referential integrity, or you may have heard of it and wonder what the heck is it. Now, I'm going to do a little comparison, as I often do, between Access and Excel. Here we have an Excel spreadsheet, and let's, let's take a very simplistic um, database setup. So it's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we have our list of customers in, uh, in, in one page. Our business isn't doing all that well, is it? Uh, we have a list of customers and we have a list of their orders in another page. Now, sometimes you may think, well, okay, we want to put the customer's name in the orders table. Um, but that's generally not a good idea when you have related tables, and that's where Access gives you an advantage over Excel. In Excel, these are two completely separate tables. I mean, they're different worksheets in the same database. They could be uh, in the same uh, spreadsheet file. Um, they could be in different spreadsheet files for all that matters. I mean, well, no, you, you have two worksheets in the same file and of course you can refer to cells uh, in another uh, in another worksheet but they're still disjointed tables and so the reason we just use a customer id and so if i i want to look up uh, frodo baggins's orders i don't do it by name i do it by customer id one and i can see his orders here now obviously this is not something you're going to do manually well, I have to look at the customer ID, then I have to go to the orders. No, Access will automate, we can automate this process. Um, but the point being that uh, there are two separate tables. And by the way, uh, you know, the, the reason we use customer ID instead of the customer name, I mean, if, if we put Frodo's name in here, but misspelt it in, in one of these instances, well, you're going to have a pretty hard time looking up his orders if you if you have two different spellings of his name and you're searching by name. Well, that's not going to work so well. So uh, we talk. So and, and that's an important topic when we talk about referential integrity. Um, and it's one of those concepts that's easier just to show you than to try to make a definition of it. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open the Access database where we've already had, we've already imported these tables. Actually, technically, I exported these from the Access database. So uh, let's let's go and take a look at that Access database, which we have right here. So we have a customers table and we have an orders table. Okay, so I touched on what referential integrity is when I talked about why we use a customer ID instead of putting the customer's name. Um, so access is what we call a relational database and and we have a separate video on what a relational database is but basically we can take those two tables and actually connect them to each other in a way that you can't do in excel yeah you can refer to one worksheet from another you can refer to the cells in worksheet b in sheet two from sheet one you could do that um, but, but that's not actually connecting the tables. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, database tools. We're going to go into relationships. And of course, again, this is a very simple database with two tables, but it's, it's good for explaining this concept. We want to keep things as, as simple as possible, even, you know, even at the expense of some realism. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, the customer ID in the customer's table I spelled it differently, but is related to the customer ID in the orders table. That, that's our lookup field in, in a sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, highlight customer ID, and you see, by the way, you see that, that, that key symbol? That means uh, in Access, that, that's called, that, that means that that field, that column, these are, these are each columns, uh, is a primary key, meaning that this is the column in the table that uniquely identifies a row. If I open up the customer's table, I can't have more, since customer ID is the primary key, I can't, if I try to introduce, put another four in here, uh, it's not going to let me. Yeah, see, 
duplicate, I can't have duplicate values. So customer ID uh, uniquely identifies the row. Um, it, it could be multiple columns too, in which case it's the combination of values that has to be unique. All right, but let's close that. So let, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this over to the customer ID in the other table, and that will create a relationship between the two. Um, for the time, the, in for, referential integrity is right here for the, but for the time being, I'm just gonna click create. And, uh, and, we'll, and we'll come back to that uh, and save the relation. Uh, oh, it's already saved it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the customer's table. Now, do you notice there's a difference from before? We got these little plus, these little um, expandable, um, you know, uh, trees here. If I click this for photo bag, I see photo baggins as orders. See, this is what Excel doesn't give you. It's almost as though orders is a sub table of customers. I can open Lincoln's and see his orders. I can open Plantagenet and see his orders. And that's basically what creating relationships does. Now, relationships is a part of referential integrity, but it's not everything. So I'm going to go ahead and close a table because I have to. And I'm going to go back to create, uh, back to, sorry, back to the relationships window. And then let's double click on this. And now let's go to enforce referential integrity. So I'm going to click on this. And like I said, rather than explain it, it's much easier just to show you wh what that means. So I'm going to click, I'm going to check that box and I'm going to close this. And uh, it access accepts it because um, basically what we're saying is if you're going to enter a customer ID in the orders table, that customer ID better exist in the customer's table already. That's what referential integrity is. Uh, if we already had a customer ID that didn't exist in customer's table, uh, if you know, customers, we have, I think it's one, two, and four. If I put a customer ID of seven in the orders table, and then I tried to create, and then I, and then I check this box, it would not allow, access would not allow me to do that because there's pre-existing data that violates that integrity. But in this case, um, it doesn't. So we're good to go. And let's save the relationships. Now, um, you look at the table and nothing really has changed. Um, we, we still have that, uh, we still have that relationship. But what I want to do is I want to open the orders table. And let's add another order for Henry Plantagenet. So uh, the order ID column is an auto number, meaning Access will assign an order ID automatically at the next unused number. So um, I'm just gonna put uh, customer ID four and the total for this new order, which is $50. Okay, no problem. And when I go back to um, the, ta the customer's table, I see that new order, order 10. And again, that's the relationship part of the, that's why, you know, access is referred to as a relational database because the two tables, these tables are tied together. They're hooked together in a relationship. And again, you, Excel, yes, you can refer to one table from the other, in other words, you could do, you know, sheet one, if you're familiar with Excel, you could do sheet one, bang, uh, and then, you know, a cell, right? You can refer to a, a, a cell in sheet two from sheet one. So the tables can talk to each other in a way, but they're not, but there's no enforced relationship. If I go back to the, if I opened up the spreadsheets again, in fact, let's do that. I, I, well, no, yeah, there were two separate. Uh, no, I had them in one. Yeah, there we go. If I open this again and I go into orders and I put, again, there's no auto ID here. If I put an order for customer nine, there's nothing, there's no customer ID called nine. There's no customer with ID of nine, but Excel doesn't care. Well, I mean, you know, it, it has no idea because there's no tie between these tables. There's no way in Excel, I mean, I, I, can, I can use data validation to enforce a certain range of customer IDs. I can enforce that this is a, um, you know, a, a valid um, 
price or valid, you know, uh, currency. In fact, it's not even currency, right? You can make it currency. Uh, but the bottom line is I can't enforce a relationship between those two tables in Excel. That's, that's beyond, that part is beyond Excel's capability. Now I'll say that anyway. Okay, but now you see, let's see what happens when I try to enter an order for a non-existing customer. So let's say I slip up and I enter uh, customer number seven, places an order for, uh, for, for uh, $20.50. Okay, now look what happens. Okay, you see we get this error message here. This error message says you cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table customers. In other words, what Access is saying here is you can't, you can't enter a customer ID 7 because this field... Oh, okay, let's, let's make it happy. Right. Um, you can't do that because this field, this customer ID field is tied to this cust ID field with referential integrity. So you cannot change it. You cannot enter anything that doesn't already exist in customer ID. That's a little protection. Prevents from, from entering a customer that, uh, that doesn't exist. And again, you know, in a real situation, we're going to use forms. And I think we already have a form here, which we'll show in a moment, uh, you know, Generally speaking, in Access, you do not enter data directly in tables. That's that's not done. Uh, so, I mean, the fact that we have this uh, this nested relationship here, yeah, it's cool. It it shows you that we have the relationship. But in reality, yeah, I mean, I can add new orders from, through here too. I mean, I I, I can. Oops, what do we, I mean, uh, I can enter a new order for Abe Lincoln, and oops, why do I keep doing that? So there we go. Uh, new, I can enter a new order for $55 and see it's 12. And then when I go back, I think I have to refresh. Yeah, when I refresh this table, the 12 appears in there. So that's what referential integrity does. Now, you may have noticed there's a few other uh, checkboxes there. So let's go ahead and close this and go back to relationships. Uh, there's a couple other checkbox pots there. One says cascade update, and the other says cascade delete. So we can make some additional rules, some additional exceptions uh, to this rule. I'm gonna uh, select cascade update. Actually, before I do that, let me, I wanna go back to um, the orders table. I mean, I think this should make sense, but if I take an existing, or just like I can't, uh, enter a new order for customer seven. I can't change an existing order to seven either. Okay, yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, it, it works the other way around as well. Uh, let's suppose. Okay, see. It won't let, I, I tried to change Frodo's customer ID to two. Now, I think that's an auto field anyway, so it wouldn't normal, Access wouldn't normally allow me to change that field. But in any event, uh, even, if, uh, even if it wasn't an automatic number, I still couldn't change it because table orders includes related records. In other words, this would cause all, this would cause the customer ID of one here, all the customer IDs of one here, but those would now be invalid. So it doesn't work the other way around either. So that's how, so that's the current situation. Now, if I, the cascading is how we handle things like that. Uh, by the way, I can't delete him either. Cannot be deleted. I can't, I can't delete this customer. I can't delete customer one because customer one has orders. And that would basically orphan these orders here. And I can't do that. All right, um, but there may be situations where you want to be able to do that. Maybe, you know, uh, you're, you're putting in a new system and all customer IDs have to be four digits now. So there may be a legitimate uh, reason why you need to change customer IDs. Well, that's where the cascade comes in. So we're gonna go back to the relationships. And let's let's uh, yeah, let's check both of these. 
cascade update and cascade delete. We've kind of seen both of them. Cascade update means that if I change the customer ID in the customers table, it will automatically change uh, the relevant field. So it's not, it's not going to orphan the customer number one. It's going to change customer one in the orders table to whatever I change it to in the customers table. Uh, cascade delete works the same way. I mean, it wouldn't let me edit uh, it wouldn't let me edit a customer ID in the orders table. It wouldn't let me edit a cust uh, um, sorry, in the customers table. Access would not let me change a customer ID to a non-existent customer ID. Likewise, and that, that's the cascade update, it would also, if I tried to delete customer one, it would not let me do that either because there are related records. Now, I can't keep going back and forth there. If I, for example, um, if we had a customer, let's enter a new customer here. Oh, it's not automatic. We'll give customer ID five. Now, Joe Smith doesn't have any orders. So if I delete him, that's fine. I'm able to do that because he doesn't have any orders in here, so there's no danger of that. Okay, so that's that's the update versus delete. So let, let's let's see that in action. And this time we mean it. <laughs> okay. Uh, now let's again let's open both of these. Okay, now uh, let's suppose we had to change our customer IDs for a new system. They have to be four digits. Now. So I'm going to take uh, Frodo Baggins and change his customer ID to 1001. Now watch what happens in the orders table when I click on the next record. You see, both of these automatically change. They're, they're, they're tied together. But access is, you know, before I check those boxes, the cascade, it would say, no, you can't change that because it's going to leave the customer ID ones here um, are not going to have uh, the orders with, these orders are not going to have a customer. But because I checked that box, access will say, okay, fine. If you want to change him to 1001, that's fine. We're, we'll just automatically change. We'll find all the related records and simply change those two. Um, same for Abe Lincoln and Henry Plantagenet. And now you see it's cascade update. So that's what the cascade update does. What the cascade delete does is if now I delete, uh, let's actually add a new customer here. Um, okay, we add a new customer here and let's add an order. Let's add a couple actually. Okay, now the cascade delete means if let's suppose we uh, Joe Smith doesn't pay his dues one month or whatever <laughs> um, membership fee. Uh, so we we delete and normally in normal practice you never delete records. <laughs> That's generally bad practice in database design, but just for illustrative purposes, um, we would archive the record or or make mark them inactive or something like that. But anyway, that's. Uh, beside the point, let's uh, delete the record. If I delete it here, relationships that specify cascading deletes are about to cause one record in this table along with related records and related tables, that would be the orders, to be deleted. Are you sure? I'll say yes. And keep your eye on the, the two last orders. Okay, it says pound sign deleted. You know, when we refresh the table, they'll be gone. Again, if I didn't check cast up, uh, cascade delete, I would not have been allowed to do that. It would say, no, you can't delete 1004 because he's out of orders. You can't change his number and you can't delete him because that would leave, that would leave orphaned orders here with, with no customer and we can't, and we can't allow that. Um, and now, in terms of do you want, in terms of best practices, um, are there cases where you should or should not use cascading? Um, and, and, and that depends on the application. Um, 
what I generally do, my, my kind of default method is to use cascade update, but not cascade delete. And the reason for that is that, as I said a moment ago, generally speaking, you don't want to delete customers you because that deletes every all the information you want to at least mark them inactive or or, or you know or do something else if i put on cascade delete it would not only delete that customer but it would delete then that customer's entire order history we may want to keep order histories we may have a lot of reasons um you know we're, we're planning inventory for the next year i mean just because this customer left his orders still exist we don't want to delete his orders Right. Uh, and, and yet, of course, if if you delete the customer, you have to be able to delete the orders. Or you can't delete the customer. Right. So so that's another reason why we don't delete. We would not delete customers in this case. But so I would generally leave this turned off to prevent that from happening. I want to keep the old orders, even if that customer leaves. Um, cascade update is less risky, although generally speaking i usually um usually and i didn't do that in this case um but usually customers and i didn't set i didn't set it up in this table but we would set this up as an auto number it's not going to let me do that now oh. but we would set this up for an auto number where if you add a new customer it automatically increases, uh, it automatically would, you know, it, it would go to 1004 and whatever. Actually, it would go to 1005 because we've already used 1004. Uh, but uh, in other words, the customer ID isn't directly editable anyway. And if it's not editable anyway, then cascade update is kind of moot. You're not, you're, you know, why bother cascading these changes if you can't change this field anyway? So I, I find that update on or off doesn't really matter that much. In terms of cascade delete, there may be some cases where you, where you do want to keep it. It really depends on the application, um, you know, uh, how 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 you're um, how you're doing, what what type of data you're dealing with, and so that's an individual decision uh, that you have to make. But this was a demonstration on what referential integrity is why it's an essential part of relational databases and why re relational being a relational database is such a vital part of access access is a relational database system that's what it does and i think i said i would get to the forms and um only because this is how we would normally um enter orders but you see we add a new order, and I think the order ID is automatic, I believe. Yeah, that's okay. The order ID is set to auto increment. Um, but I can select the customer from a drop down box, and it reads the customers. It, 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 get, it uses the customer's table to get these values, but it's actually storing the customer ID behind the scenes. Um, so when I, when I add the order, you know, it. It adds the order to the database, but if you look behind the scenes here, uh, see, it's selecting the ID and the name, but it's only showing the name. When I select customer, when I select the customer name, I'm actually, I'm actually selecting the ID behind the scenes. So the orders table is still being populated populate with a proper ID and you're not putting the name into the, into the orders table. But but this is how you would almost always edit data. You almost never do it through the table. So some of that stuff about having the subtables is a little bit moot. But anyway, that's what referential integrity is. I hope this um, either uh, cleared up any confusion or taught you something new. And again, we can make very powerful customized databases using whatever rules you need and, and 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 this is just one more example of how we can make very powerful and easy to use databases with very simple tools okay thank you for watching if you like this please like the video subscribe uh, and um, visit our webpage 
watch it. Uh, ask if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Any suggestions for future videos? We, we really love to see those. And so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.